going to take the 33 for a bit of a cruise because I love hearing that dose. It's the best feeling in the world. Oh man, that sound is the best. In this episode, we're going to be working on my S14. We've already done the oil cooler stuff. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Because one week, actually in six days, next Monday, Keeper Reet is on. Finally, it's a private track day, unfortunately. There'll be no spectators, which is shattering because I do want to meet the subscribers at these drift events. They don't let spectators at the track, but you know, they're letting people at the tennis, which is just really weird. But anyway, I'm getting really excited because in this episode, we're going to be working the S14, as I said. What we're going to do is we're going to install a swirl pop before we put the swirl pot in. If you guys don't know what that is, you guys will find out in a second. Man, what is with all these shit drivers, man? put the swirl pot in I have to cut up my rad support because we're gonna push the radiator as close as we can away from my engine because we need to fit a thermo fan when you're out drifting you need a thermo fan or a clutch fan if you have a clutch fan they are the best to use but unfortunately we can't fit one in my s14 because it's got an RB25 swap it's just not enough room hence why we're gonna chop up the rad support so hopefully we can do all that chop up the rad support Fit a nice thermo fan, hopefully it pulls the air nice and strong so that way when we're out hitting limiter drifting on tracks, I really hope it doesn't overheat. If it gets hot, the reason why I'm doing this setup is because if it gets hot, I want to do a cool down lap and actually cool down because the last track event, I did two cool down laps and the, the temperature did not want to drop due to a shit thermo fan, shit radiator setup. So that's why we're going to do all this work to the S14. Let's go hit some boost. <laughs> This is the thermostat I'm using. Take this part number down. It is a high flow one, if you can see right there. So we'll chuck that in the car and hopefully it helps. Then you chuck the thermostat back into its housing. Then you chuck some sealant around the housing and then bolt it back up very tight. There's just three bolts, simple as that. I'll show you guys the rest of the parts. So right here is a swirl pot. We're gonna be using this swirl pot. And notice that there's four ports on this thing. And then we've got the Gates coolant hose right here. We'll be routing that around the car with this. Now with this, as I said, four ports. The top one goes to your overflow. This one goes to the overflow as well onto the radiator. This one goes on top of your intake manifold. Then the bottom one, that bottom one goes to the bottom radiator hose. So if you can see here, I've got two adapters, one for the water temp sensor at the top. Then the bottom one, my mate Scott did this in his S13 and gave me the idea. So it's a very smart idea. We bolt it up here and then we run a line from the bottom of that onto this fitting so that way it can get coolant to the bottom of the radiator hose. So I'll show you guys how to install that in a moment. Uh, this is the factory coolant line that goes to the two ports on the side of the block. This is not going to work anymore because the bloody 90 degree fittings on the oil sandwich plate just take up too much room. So now we're going to have to like go to the shops tomorrow. And hopefully we can custom make a coolant hose from the front of the port to the back of the port. Hope to make it work with some joiners. And then we're going to connect up the gauges. Now with my radiator, I'll show you guys what I've done in a second. There was no point filming cutting this. It was just a tremendous job. But we've just made this fit. If you guys can see that, I chopped a bit of the thermo at the bottom there just to make it fit. But it does pull air through pretty good, and I'll show you guys that in a moment. I'm just doing some trial and error at the moment. And then we're going to try and make this coolant hose, all this stuff work. So the harmonic balancer sticks out quite a bit, yeah? It was hitting like up against the plastic here. Now that I've trimmed it, it's actually not in the way anymore. But yeah, this is the thermo. This is a Nissan thermo. It actually pulls strong, and I'll show you guys right now. You guys are probably wondering why there is a zip tie underneath this damn thermo and I'll show you exactly why. I've done it so tight that you can see the bend through the tab. It's bending because it's so tight. The reason why I've put the zip tie there, it keeps this from flapping around so it won't hit the harmonic balancer. So if I'm out drifting, this will not flap at the bottom. Man, this engine bay is going to be so cluttered because I've got the swirl pot mounted right there. So it's going to be at the highest point. So when I say that, it's going to be higher than that radiator cap, so which that is. And now this radiator cap becomes a dead cap, so there'll be no pressure on this cap. And then you put the pressure cap on this one. And then we're going to run the line. So I'm going to run one of these lines here underneath, and then up through here, and then onto that port. This guy will run to here, 
this guy will run to the overflow and then the bottom one goes to the bottom hose but I'll show you guys along the way alright dude doing... the next day I did skip a lot of filming on how to do all of this stuff because if you look over here if you see that thing there's a trampoline there and the neighbors have kids so they're screaming and bouncing around while I'm trying to work on the car and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to hear screaming in the background I'll show you guys exactly what I've done and how to set up this swirl pot the fitting over here the third one from the top I've got this line from gates actually there's no kink in it runs underneath the intake manifold there up through around then up and over into this port down here if you look at that there's no kink in that it's perfect so it's not going to be blocked when the coolant's flowing through and then the one at the bottom if you come down here got the line running all the way to the bottom radiator hose down here to the fitting so the job isn't hard to do it's just trial and error trying to make like this thing fit like cutting this was just annoying like i like how this is nice and clean here but then i accidentally cut off too much but who cares it's a tracker and then this thermo it looks like it hits the harmonic balance on the camera but it actually clears it a lot so i'm keen as for this so if you see it there there's a port there and then there's another port right there and to get to those two ports we have to custom fit these coolant hoses right here so i'm going to chop it right here and here and i'm going to chuck this joiner in between so it becomes one long hose it has to be about 45 centimeters in length and then we'll trim this here trim this here and it should go into those ports perfectly so hopefully this all works out Man, this oil pressure sensor has to be the best wiring I've ever seen because what you do is you've got two wires and they've already got terminals on them, yeah? Come down here, you see on the oil pressure sensor right there? You just slide on top of that and then bolt them down. So easy. Now that I've connected up the wires to the oil pressure sensor, look how long the wiring is. If you wanted your oil pressure gauge in the back seat, you literally could put it back there. So yeah, we're gonna zip tie this somewhere, make it shorter and have the oil pressure gauge sit somewhere here. All right, let's see how this goes, because I've sort of got it done. Definitely need music for this shit. You got beauty. It's not the prettiest thing, but at least we got it to the two ports there. We got the joiner in the middle right there. They fit perfect. No weird kinks in the lines whatsoever. The only thing I'm not happy about there is a lot of lines everywhere here. Look at that, just black lines everywhere, man. Fuel stuff, the oil, the coolant stuff, it's everywhere. Oh well, and everything's pretty much held together with zip ties too. Coolant lines are done, swirl pot's done, chopped up the radiator, fit the thermo back there. I just gonna quickly run to the shop, grab a sensor, so I gotta buy another water temp gauge. I don't want to, but once we put that in, Put the center and ready to fill up the water coolant not water chuck in some coolant and into the swell pot as well start the car see how it all goes and then we get to go drifting next monday i'm so excited to keep it right man i'm just so glad i got all this done hell yeah the water temp sender i cannot believe i just paid 74 dollars for a water temp gauge just so i could use the bloody water temp sensor right here that's all that i needed asap I already got a water temp gauge, but I guess I'll be using this one now. So I'll be doing a video of installing gauges maybe this Thursday. So I'll be doing the oil pressure, the oil temp, water temp gauge on Thursday's video. But for now, I'm going to chuck the sender in and chuck some coolant in the car and get this thing started. So I'll just chuck the sensor on right here. You can see there. in seven liters of coolant that's topped up in here you can tell it's only halfway so we're gonna have to go buy some more coolant i was already at the shops but god damn it let's start this car see how much we need to get because we're gonna let all the coolant run through all the lines here make sure to check everywhere that there's no leaks as i said before let's go start it all right start this thing Ooh. hasn't been started in a little bit have a look just let everything bleed through what is that whistling sound oh i think i spilt a bit of coolant on the belt no biggie car just needs to warm up because it hasn't been started properly without oil and coolant for a long time so everything is just running around but yeah we'll need some more coolant for there 
stuck on the thermo fan actually. Flip the switch on, boom. You can hear how powerful the thermo is. And if you put your hand here, you can actually feel the air getting sucked in from here. And the air is actually cold here, so that's actually pretty good. I really hope this setup works. I'm gonna put you guys down. I'm gonna inspect everything first. Everything's looking really good. There's no leaks anywhere. We definitely need to get some more coolant. The thermo fan is actually working perfect. If I put my hand on this, right, look, I'm touching it. It's actually cold, whereas if I touch here, fuck. It's actually really hot up there. But if I put my hand on the fan here, it's got cold air here. That's perfect. I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna let it run for about 10 more minutes. Go back to the shops and uh, top this up with more coolant. But I'm just getting it really hot so I start bleeding on it. So just start pressing on the hoses. Bleed all the bubbles out by pressing on the hoses. If you've got a heater, chuck the heater on full blast. Let the car idle, bleed it. It's easier. But if you don't have a heater like me, no heater core. Just press on the coolant hoses down here. Squeeze them. Bleed out all the bubbles. Thursday, when I installed the water temp gauge, we'll see what the temperatures are at. But if you come in here and you see on my gauge, the factory gauge, that's actually where it's meant to be. It's not too hot at all. So keen for drifting. Let's hope all this hard work has paid off. So we'll find out next week when we go drifting at Calder Park. We'll go full send, hit some limiter and see how this car goes. I have a good feeling the new setup's gonna work perfect. All right, dudes, finally got everything touched up on the S14. We're finally ready for Keep It Reet next week. I'm so excited to go drifting in this S14. See how it all goes with this whole new setup. And I thought I should let you know as well, I just raised the bonnet. It's the only things I could find around the house for now. 30 mil spaced up. I'll do a walk around quickly of the car. Let me know what you guys think. It does sit a little high up, but the plan is to get all the hot air out of here when we're hitting limit. I mean, it just gets too hot in here. So if this is pulling cold air through, we definitely want all the hot stuff, especially on the hot side as well with the exhaust stuff. Those 30 mil spaces are going to help with the airflow, get all that hot air out. Not the prettiest thing, but it works, hopefully. This, this side sits nice and flush here, but this side here has a gap because the bonnet rests on the intake manifold. Damn it! But it doesn't look too bad and because this is the exhaust side all the hot air that gets trapped in there will now blow out when we're full sending it it doesn't look too bad the plus side is all the hot air will come out so we'll see how it goes when we're out on track if i end up not liking it i'll try to find smaller spaces maybe jump from 30 mil down to maybe 20 mil 15 mil maybe but for now we'll just leave it like this and see how it goes not too bad Yeah, should be right. And that's a wrap for this S14 for now. We'll find out next Monday when we go drifting if it all paid off. So hopefully the temps stay down. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think of my work. I know it's a bit sketchy, but it is a drift car. This thermo feels amazing. I think I've done a good job for now with all the cooling stuff. Now, if you're a new viewer, definitely hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. Make sure you hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. And as always, I'll catch you guys next episode. Catch you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.